This is the all new KDE Plasma 6.5 and this is one of the most polished plasma releases we have had in years. Automatic day-night theme switching, rounded corners for app windows, a ton of polishing touches and Plasma 6.5 is also bringing a feature that was requested 22 years ago, finally. And I think most of you are gonna love it. I've been playing around with Plasma 6.5 and this release is absolutely loaded. Plasma 6.5 is what happens when you take a rock solid foundation and focus on making the experience better in all the ways that actually matter. So in this video, I'm breaking down everything new in KD Plasma 6.5. Let's jump right in. Starting off with one of the biggest new features of Plasma 6.5, we now get automatic day and night theme switching. And this is something that users have been requesting for years, I mean literally years. And KDE has finally delivered. Plasma 6.5 introduces a new module called K Night Time that automatically transitions your desktop between light and dark themes based on the time of day. No more manually flipping switches when the sun goes down. Your desktop just adapts to the lighting conditions around you, providing a more comfortable viewing experience throughout the day and night. And here's the cool part. K Night Time doesn't just switch themes. It also adjusts your screen's color temperature, integrating functionality similar to the existing night color feature. So you're getting a unified solution for time-based screen adjustments. This is huge for eye comfort, especially if you're working late into the evening. I use nightlight feature on absolutely all of my devices, so I understand the impact this can have on your sleep and eye comfort level. I absolutely love this. Enabling this is super straightforward. Just head over to the global theme settings and you'll see a switch to dark mode at night toggle. Flip that on and you're good to go. Plasma handles everything else automatically. This feature brings KDE in line with what we have seen on other major operating systems and mobile platforms, actually since a long time. And honestly, once you start using automatic theme switching, there's no going back. It's one of those quality of life improvements that you don't realize you need it until you have it. Oh, and Plasma 6.5 also ships with a fresh new default wallpaper called Orionids, giving your desktop a brand new visual identity with this release. Next up, we have rounded bottom window corners. And this is one of those subtle design changes that makes a huge visual impact once you see it. KDE Plasma 6.5 now gives you server-side rounded corners for borderless windows using the Breeze theme. And these are handled directly by the KWIN compositor. This creates a softer, more modern aesthetic for your desktop. Developers have been wanting this for years and it's finally here. The rounded corners are enabled by default, so you're going to see this polished look right out of the box. But here's the thing, if you're a purist and you prefer the traditional sharp cornered aesthetic, you can disable this feature in the settings. KDE gives you that choice. This might seem like a small change, but these kinds of visual refinements really add up. They give Plasma that premium contemporary feel that competes with the best looking desktops out there. And honestly, once you see those smooth rounded corners, sharp corners start feeling a bit dated. Plasma 6.5 is what I'd call a quality of life release. The developers have taken the stable Plasma 6.x foundation and are now focused on addressing community feedback with refinements and polish. And there are three areas where this really shows. First up, dynamic wallpaper control. If you have wallpapers that ship with both light and dark variants, Plasma 6.5 gives you way more control over how they behave. You can configure them to switch in sync with global color scheme, change based on the time of the day, or just permanently lock them to either the light or the dark version. This ties beautifully with the K night time module we just talked about. Your wallpaper can now adapt throughout the day, keeping your desktop aesthetic consistent with your preferences at all times. Next up, we have the customizable system settings landing page. You can now select which global themes are displayed on the main screen. This is huge for streamlining your workflow. If you have a few favorite themes you'd like to switch between, you can put them front and center. No more hunting through long lists, just quick, easy access to your go-to themes. And finally, the auditory experience. The ocean sound theme which was introduced back in Plasma 6.0 has been refined. Specifically, the sound effect that plays when you change the volume has been softened. It's less harsh and clipped now, especially at higher volume levels. This might seem minor, but these little touches matter. They make everyday interaction with your desktop more pleasant. All these refinements add up. As I said, Plasma 6.5 isn't just about big flashy features. It's about making your desktop feel more polished and thoughtful in every interaction. Alright, this next one is absolutely huge. And I'm not just talking about the feature itself, I'm talking about what it represents. Plasma 6.5 finally lets you star and permanently save clipboard entries. Yeah, you heard that right. You can now take any clipboard item and pin it permanently. This means you can store frequently used text snippets like email addresses, code blocks, command line instructions, 
or anything you need to paste regularly and they'll stay there ready to use whenever you need them. Now let me tell you why this is such a big deal. This feature was first requested 22 years ago, yeah back in 2003 and it's finally here in 2025. That's more than two decades of the community asking for this. And you know what, the fact that KDE has now delivered on this shows something important. It shows that the project has reached a level of maturity where you can go back and address that historical debt while still pushing forward with new innovations. This isn't just about adding a feature, it's a message to the long-term community that their feedback matters, that they are being heard and that KDE values its users, although they might be a little slow at that. From a practical standpoint, this is a massive workflow boost. If you are a developer constantly pasting the same code snippets or you have standard responses you need to send regularly or even just your email address that you type out all the time, you can now star those items and have instant access to them. No more searching through clipboard history, just permanent easy access. This is one of those features that once you start using, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. Now if you are coming from GNOME, you might not know about KRunner. This is Plasma's search and command launcher. You hit a keyboard shortcut Alt plus space by default and it pops up, letting you search for apps, files, run commands, do calculations and a whole lot more. It's one of KDE's power tools. And in Plasma 6.5, KRunner gets seriously smarter. First, it now has fuzzy matching for applications. What this means is, KRunner is way more forgiving of typos and partial names. You mess up the spelling, no problem, it'll figure out what you meant. Second, KRunner can now search for global keyboard shortcuts. This is huge for discovering all those keyboard shortcuts that Plasma has. You can literally search for shortcuts and learn them on the fly. And third, results now appear immediately after you type the first character. Almost all KRunner plugins have been updated to give you instant feedback. This makes the whole experience feel lightning fast and super responsive. For power users and tinkerers, this is a massive upgrade to one of Plasma's most essential tools. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. System settings in Plasma 6.5 has gotten a major architectural upgrade and this is all about reducing friction and making your workflow smoother. First up, quick toggles. Settings pages can now export toggles directly to the system settings sidebar. What this means is you can toggle Bluetooth on or off with a single click from the main view. No more diving into sub pages just to turn something on or off. This saves you clicks and time every single day. This definitely needs to be implemented on more settings such as Wi-Fi and maybe even the dark mode here. Second, smart pages. System settings now intelligently hides pages for hardware you don't have. If you don't have a drawing tablet or a game controller connected, those settings pages won't clutter your system settings, they just disappear. This creates a cleaner, more relevant interface that only shows you what actually matters for your system. And if you need to troubleshoot or configure something, there's still an option to show all pages regardless of hardware detection. Discover Plasma Software Center gets some really practical upgrades in version 6.5. First, one-click Flathub installation. Discover now supports Flatpak plus URLs. What this means is you can browse Flathub on your web browser, click the install button on any app page and it'll automatically launch Discover and take you straight to that app. Just hit install and you're done. This creates a much more web integrated experience and makes installing third party software incredibly smooth. Second, driver installation. This is huge. Discover can now install hardware drivers directly from your distribution's repositories. No more hunting on or dropping into the terminal for driver installation. Everything's centralized in a user-friendly graphical interface. This makes Plasma way more appealing for hardware vendors and everyday users who just want their hardware to work without hassle. Now this was actually introduced in KDE Plasma 6.4 itself but in this version it has been polished up for prime time usage. Third, performance improvements. Under the hood, developers fixed a big bottleneck in the FWUPD backend that handles firmware updates. The result? Discover launches much faster now. The whole application feels snappier and more responsive. Plasma 6.5 takes a big step forward in security and privacy management with unified application permissions. The old Flatpak permissions page has been completely overhauled and renamed to application permissions. This isn't just a cosmetic change. This new hub now manages permissions for all applications that use the XDG portal system, not just Flatpaks. 
What this means for you is a single centralized place to control what apps can access your system, whether it's a camera, microphone, files, or location. You manage it all from one consistent interface. Here's the important part. This system abstracts away the underlying packaging format. You don't need to worry about whether an app is a flat pack, snap, or a native package. You just see apps and their permissions. Simple, consistent, trustworthy. As Linux desktop application distributions become more decentralized, having this kind of unified security control is very important, not to mention convenient and cohesive. Now let's talk about Wayland. Plasma 6.5 is where Wayland stops playing catch up with X11 and starts surpassing it. This is the real deal. The biggest upgrade here is the support for overlay planes and GPU underlays. What does this mean? When you're watching a full screen video or playing a game, the cave in compositor can now tell your GP to handle the content on a dedicated hardware plane. This bypasses the normal rendering loop where everything gets combined into one image. The result, significant reduction in GPU load and power consumption. Your laptop battery lasts longer. Your system runs cooler and quieter and gaming and video playback become more efficient. This is a level of hardware acceleration that X11 just can't do in the same way. This is Wayland actually being better than X11. Second, Pointer Warp Protocol. This is critical for first-person games and 3D modeling software. It lets the applications control the cursor position programmatically. Without this, many games and creative tools just don't work properly. Now they do. This new protocol has many benefits, especially for people with multiple monitors. Wayland is not just getting better than X11, it's taking off at light speed. Plasma 6.5 takes accessibility seriously, and these are real meaningful improvements that make the desktop usable for everyone. First, device plugin notifications. Every time you connect a peripheral, Plasma now shows a notification. This might seem minor, but it's actually driven by EU Directive 2019-882, which requires clear audio-visual feedback for hardware interactions. This helps users with visual impairments and actually all users know when a device connects and it's useful for everyone as a troubleshooting tool. Don't want the notification? You can disable them. Second, a new grayscale color filter. This joins the existing color blindness filters and lets you desaturate or completely remove colors from your screen. This is great for accessibility testing, improving readability on e-ink displays, or just personal preference. Third, improved screen zoom on Wayland. The zoom effect now correctly tracks your text cursor. This is crucial for low vision users. When you're typing and the screen is zoomed, the view follows your cursor so you can always see what you're typing. These accessibility improvements really make this version just better for more people. Finally, Plasma 6.5 brings some excellent hardware integration improvements that power users and creative professionals will absolutely love. First, drawing tablet configuration. This has been highly requested for years. You can now configure tablet dials and touch rings directly in system settings. These controls are standard on professional grade tablets and are used for things like adjusting brush size, zooming or scrolling the canvas. Before you'd need third party tools or custom scripts to set this up. Now it's built right into Plasma. For digital artists, this is huge. Second, printer ink monitoring. Plasma now monitors your printer's ink and toner levels and automatically notifies when they are running low. This is one of those quality of life features that prevents those annoying moments when you go to print something important and discover you're out of ink. Works great for both home and office users. Third, better multi-monitor information. If you have a complex display setup, the display configuration page now shows detailed info like monitor serial numbers and connector names like HDMI 1 or DP2. This makes it way easier to identify and manage specific displays when you're configuring extended desktops or mirroring setups. Here's a feature that might not excite everyday users, but it's absolutely huge for the Linux ecosystem as a whole. Plasma 6.5 introduces KISS, the KDE Initial System Setup Wizard. KISS is a first boot wizard that runs on a system where no user account exists yet. Think OEM devices, pre-installed Linux computers, things like that. Previously, Plasma relied entirely on distributions installer to handle user creation. But now, Plasma has its own polished integrated setup experience built right in. Why does this matter? Because it makes Plasma way more attractive to hardware vendors. Companies like Tuxedo Computers or Valve with their Steam Deck can now ship devices with a streamlined, branded, out-of-the-box Plasma experience. Everything's handled within Plasma itself. This is actually a strategic move to position KD as the go-to desktop for Linux hardware. And honestly, with all these improvements we are seeing, Plasma is making a very compelling case. So here's the thing, Plasma 6.5 is, this is KD firing on all cylinders, from automatic theme switching to that 22 year old clipboard feature finally landing. 
to win and actually surpassing X11. This really shows KDE is listening to its community and delivering real thoughtful improvements. With KISS for OEM devices, accessibility compliance, and deep hardware integration, Plasma is positioning itself as a serious contender for mainstream adoption. There's also a new picture-in-picture -picture mode in Plasma 6.5, but that's experimental at the moment and I couldn't get it working, so we'll cover it in 6.6 .6 release. There you have it, your first look at KD Plasma 6.5 and everything new in it. It will be available starting with the bleeding edge distros such as Arch Linux and later on in stabler distros. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero in the shortest time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this cool new Linux distribution called Omachi. It's actually getting a lot of hype in the Linux community and it's got some really cool features, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Tech signing out.